Don't speak, bitch, don't say shit to me If you ain't speaking my language Mix some beans with promethazine Got me speaking in Spanglish Repeat and replay this Feel like I'm Nelly, I need motherfucking streams just to save me I try to hold my head high, I've been sitting on my life Got a feeling only Jesus could save me Bottles full of lean is a baby Told my mama, my bitch, she just went crazy what is up everyone, it is Andrew up here, here up be the AT Production and Publishing, bringing you guys a new YouTube video. In this YouTube video, we are doing the second part of our mixing and mastering tutorial, or our mixing and mastering rap beat tutorial, which in this uh, section we are going to master our beat. Quick disclaimer though. I am by no means a professional mixing and mastering engineer. What I mean by that is I am not certified as a like major mixing and mastering engineer. Um, I just kind of know how to do this over years of experience and I kind of just do a tactic or I go through a chain of commands that I have developed and learned that I'm going to try to teach you it's your responsibility to then is pick and take what is uh what you're going to use and expand upon so yeah just a little word of advice but you guys for those that are new and just learning i'm more than like positive like more than sure that you guys are going to find something beneficial out of this video especially for those that might already know some stuff as well so let's go ahead and get started um if you haven't already, go check our description or in our recent videos or whatnot for how to mix a rap beat because I've already did that and we've already mixed our beat. We got a very rough mix idea. So now I just want to work on a master. So let's go to our section of our song where we got majority of our sounds. We don't have everything because we don't have our bass line over here. The reason why we don't have our bass line over here is because we have the 808. And we can't have the bass line and 808 fighting against each other. So we can't have them at the same time. So what I'm going to first do is grab an EQ for our master. Oh. And then I'm going to put it to mono. And this is going to give us not a 100% mono. And I say that because it's just merging the thing i mean it's kind of it's essentially mono but it's not 100 100 um i'm actually not gonna master it though in mono 100 i just kind of want to see um where it shows up on the eq real quick So I just did a very, 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 very rough EQ. Um, just kind of like cutting some frequencies, just really. Half of this is just me already kind of knowing what I'm wanting, uh, which is kind of like dipping off these frequencies, kind of like what I would say, like the almost, in, excuse me, 
inaudible frequencies. One thing I'm also going to do is um, pull up a level system. I don't always do this honestly. I kind of just like gauge roughly on our master uh, level mix. But I figured this is probably a good way to go as well. That is not what I meant to do. Bear with me for a second. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just use our little fruity limiter as a meter. Not always the best meter to gauge from or here. Our fruity DB meter is actually going to be a better one. So what this is going to tell us is the maximum hit. I kind of want to get it to zero. It's not. And it's settling a lot down to negative 12 dB. And I don't want that. So we're going to get rid of that. I want to bring it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna put a sound goodizer, but I'm gonna pull it down. This is just to pull up certain textures and frequencies to kind of a little boost it, add a little saturation, not too much though. <clears throat> then what I'm gonna go ahead and do <coughs> is pull up a limiter we're gonna go to the compressor side pull down that thresh uh, threshold pull the ratio down to two about two it's gonna tell you up here what exactly um, measurements you're doing We're gonna push a little bit gain in there now. We're getting a little clipping, a little fuzz. It's fine. I'm gonna control save. Um, So it's coming up a little bit more. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I like to, there's so many different ways I could go about mastering this. This is what 
we're gonna try some parallel compression with a FET compressor. Um, before so before we really do anything, we're gonna leave that input at uh, zero. We're gonna leave the output at zero dB. It's gonna tell me right here. Let's pull that ratio down to like a three. Let's pull that attack. So it's kind of fast. So if we pull down the attack, that means it's gonna take less time to initialize the attack. Well, I mean, it's got to pull back slower if we pull it down. Um, release doesn't really matter. So. So currently the parallel, we're going to leave it on dry. I'll pull down this input by two. Do a slide. All right. Now we're going to play it. So what this is doing is the parallel compression is allowing us how much wetness we're gonna allow through this compressor. Um, really all I'm doing is putting an EQ, a sound goodizer, a limiter, and then another uh, limiter or compressor. Because when we pulled up this limiter, all we did was go into the compressor, pull, did a slight threshold, kind of like condensing that mix so it's less, uh, dynamic range pulling it through boosting that gain which boosting the gain is going to boost the signal loudness and pull and we're going to try to condense it down a little bit pulling in another fat uh pulling in another compressor but this time a fat compressor um i'm using a parallel injector or parallel compression which is uh essentially allowing only a percentage of the compressor to go through while allowing original uncompressed audio to go through it's kind of like parallel because you know one like there's two chains and like going at the same time type deal i don't know you know what i mean hopefully i don't know but uh continuing on this is not really doing a whole lot it's doing a tiny bit but we're gonna add in i might take it out we're just gonna like go in with go with the flow um, I'm going to pull up another third party one, uh, C4 stereo. We're going to load. We're going to use a multi electro mastering. Just kind of want to see what this is going to sound like. Just give me a second. I'm gonna go ahead and change some of my audio settings. Actually.
so we're getting a lot of distortion and clipping it's kind of bothersome it's not really giving me the biggest and best idea of how this is going to sound so we got a lot of low levels over here um where it's kind of pulling everything down i'm gonna turn off this fat compressor and see So I normally don't like uh, changing around my faders and mixers after I'm when I'm in doing my mastering because it's kind of backwards. But in this case, I had a couple instruments that I just really wanted to switch up and change around, especially during our master because our master is kind of changing our perception of this mix. Uh, just curious what this is gonna sound like mono. Um, so I like to use this multi electro mastering. Uh, it's a pretty good little condensed, uh, little condension on condension. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, but, and you don't need it. Honestly, you can get by with the mastering without the fat compressor and without the C4, you would probably reevaluate your limiters but I am making sure we're not going past this zero, but I'm also making sure I want to stay like, I don't want to go below six. That's just too quiet for me. Um, at least with this beat, I want to kind of just everything sound maximum and sound full, but I don't want to sound too full where there can't be a rapper on it.
So this is my problem. I fear that we're just not getting the most out of this and I don't want to come into a situation where I do it too much and then you guys are learning the wrong. Because this is not quite, and I think it's this fat compressor that's really the thing that's not like. So I'm gonna use this compressor over here. Um, let me re. This is gonna be level. I'm gonna look at that and kind of see the general proximity of how loud it is. I'm pretty satisfied with how we are getting this. This is just a one way of mastering. Many different ways, many different approaches. I am honestly, this is my critique. I fear that what I did on this master is a little too much compression. And I'm saying that where I fear that I might have did one over. And I don't know about this fat compressor. I'm going to turn it off. I think it's so ever slightly that we're not gonna really, it doesn't really matter. So this is kind of giving us an idea of like what this master is actually sounding like. And it's, this is my thing with uh, beats when we're doing mastering on our beats. A rapper is gonna want to rap over this. And you don't wanna, just finalize the beat and wrap it up and be like, all right, perfect, done. Because then the rapper is not going to be able to rap on it. It's going to be so full and just crowded on the mix that the rapper is going to be like, ah, can't, like, it, it, it's just not going to sound right. So when you send these stems, essentially your whole entire master is going to be thrown out. Not 100%, but almost. And when you send the stems to the artist, he's going to have his engineer go through and do everything as well. So is it really worth your time to spend 40 minutes to do one master on a beat 
which you're seeking to get an artist on, which he's going to then have his engineer kind of redo everything. And it's not quite 100%, you know, but there's a reality to this that our mixing and mastering to the beat is not as important as it is orchestrating a good and rappable beat. So I just want to always keep that in mind for you producers. Now, when you are mastering a track, like a rap track, there is a different mindset and process. We Remember, we are mastering a rap beat. There is a different process. And, and I'm just saying, in my opinion, some people may argue against and with me, but I'm just saying. And also, I just don't think this is, you want a very leveled and nice sounding beat. That's the key. We're getting there. What happens if we turned off everything? Let's find out. That's actually not that bad. It's pretty well mixed. When we turn on everything. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play one, this little section without everything, literally everything, except our dB meter, so we can kinda see. Then I'm gonna play it again with everything. So the perceived loudness is much louder. It's more condensed. Everything is brought up in kind of the bad frequencies or bumped out. Um, another critique I have over myself is I don't know if that kick is kicking through loud enough or at least loud enough as I would like. I might do a side chain compression on this um, and I might do a little bit different of a master. But this is a really good uh, idea. And you guys are able to see the level over here and kind of see the change that we had. So yeah, hopefully this uh, has been beneficial and informative for you and has uh, created some guiding and building blocks for you to on how and where to get your master started. So yeah, uh, be sure to subscribe, comment, share, com and yada yada, I almost said comment again, but you know, comment more. You know, I want engagement. I want you all's feedback. And I want you guys to check out beatit.at.com. We are back up and live. So if you guys made it all the way through this uh, part of the video, yeah, our website is up and live now. It's nice and better than ever. So yeah, uh, this is Andrew Peer here at Beta AT Production and Publishing, and I'll see you guys later.